WNST, Towson Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We're positively into my 26th year here at WNST. It's actually our 32nd year on the radio. Long enough that I remember when this place opened back in April of 1992. We are uh, we're presented by the Maryland Lottery. We're going to be at Green Mount Station in Hampstead this week. Um, I, it's a crab cake tour. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery and our friends at Window Nation, but it feels like this celebration of this 25th anniversary and the 25 stories of glory with WNST we're going to pre- presenting beginning in September. Um, this month here, it, it's all about baseball, Bill Cole. And I know you've disappeared. Since, I don't know if you know this, but you've been at the beach for like a month. The Orioles are in first place and they're really good and there's controversy and they threw their broadcast around. And all of a sudden, baseball and the Orioles and their broadcasts and first place, I can't get a, a Ravens word in edge. Lamar who? Bill Cole? Lamar? He He's so next month. He's not this month. So, so I did hear a one of my, you know, friends who is a over-the-top baseball fan. I mean, you literally had to be like an over-the-top baseball fan to stay, stay engaged in. for the right? right. So, yeah. So, like, there's already something sort of wrong with them, but, you know, he has proclaimed that like if they were to win the world series, he would probably cry for days. Cause he like literally in his lifetime, he can't conceivably comprehend. Is that. he under 40? Yeah. 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 yeah oh, yeah, yeah. see, I've always wondered, like, if you're 23, why do you like this? You, right. you know what I mean? Like, like I I've wondered that at, I love it. And I think about this all the time when I give it my time every night, my three hours, I think about Aparicio and my cousin and growing up. And I'll tell you what, I had lunch over Kenilworth the other day, and they got a little baseball diamond right where you park. It's literally right next to Kenilworth. I never knew it was there. It was a little softball diamond. And I'm thinking, man, I wish I had a glove in the trunk, hit some hot grounder. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I got baseball in my blood. So when people defecate upon me, um, you better check the last name and understand that, like, I, I, I came at this with a glove and a bat and ball in my hand before I remember anything. So, like, baseball is my first love. Like, I, 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 I don't even know. And I guess I don't say that out loud often enough, but I should. Right. Like this whole thing was born of baseball. We didn't have a football team here the first five right. years to even throw me out or mistreat right. me or run me all over the planet covering football games. It was all baseball, you know, and right. For, right. for all of my time at the Sun, I spent eight years in the newspaper business. We didn't have a team. It was all Ken Rosenthal, West Coast. They're playing the White Sox tonight. They're going to Detroit this weekend. Who's pitching? Kevin Hickey, you know, whatever. Pete oh, Barnish. So I, I, but I don't know if you're 24. Because I said yeah. this on the air. I've owned the station 25 years as of last week. So this is our 26th summer, if you count 1998, which was a washout year, right? That, that was the awful year. I went through that oh. with John Maroon last week at Drug City. They've only been relevant on in June four of the years. Right. Five, really. There was the one Palmero year they fell apart in, at 4th of July. But they've only been in the pennant race four times in 26 summers. <laughs> that, now, when I say pennant race, I mean, like, at all. You, you've you been watching. You know but this. Can't two-thirds, can't two-thirds of baseball teams say that? Like, other than the Yankees and the Red Sox and, you know, I mean, like, can't most of Major League, like, because it's such a screwy system, right, and, you know, there's no salary cap and all that other kind of crap. That's why Steve Bishotti like, always said to me he would never own the Orioles. He said, right. it's not it's so, not a fair system. He said, correct. I can't compete with the Yankees. It's not fair. So, and that and that is, I honestly think that is, like, one of the endearing things of baseball is that, 80% of the teams and their fans all commonly commiserate because we all hate the Yankees. We all hate the Red Sox because they're always good and we are never good. So, you know, you can go up and down in the AL or NL, whatever, and the majority of the teams have no chance. And that has existed for most of my lifetime, right? And then that's probably also what makes it so special when you go on the run because – well, I don't know. There's not a guy on our team making more than minimum wage, right? Like whatever, like you're, you're, you're defying the odds. So that just makes it that much more exciting. Right. But I don't know. I, and then I you have a putz the... for an owner. Well, well, even when things are going well, 
You have zero confidence that this can be managed <laughs> when he can't even manage his play-by-play broadcaster. Like, well, he, he can't even put a television network that he was gifted. I mean, this guy is going to be a Fredo of all Fredos before it's all over with because these owners, these MLP owners are going to come in and run his ass out on a rail. Like, this isn't going to end well for John Angelos. John Angelos is not taking this team to Nashville. He's not – he'll it'll end well he'll get money, but it's not going to end well that, like, he's going to be king and be loved and own man. the team 10 years from now. I do not believe that's going to be the case. So I don't, I don't think that he wants to be the king. I, you know, I don't, I don't think that being the civic savior is something that appeals to him. Uh, I, I, you know, I think that family has done a lot of good, you know, with their money in the city. So I just don't think that's, it's not his, he didn't make it. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily have that sort of DNA, but like, isn't that always, I guess my concern is that if you're an owner of another club, you are very disinterested in setting a precedent that, some regulatory body can strip away, force you to lose value in your asset because they don't like you. Whether you, you know what I mean? Like you can hate John, you can dislike the way it's happening. You can even think that it's degrading the value of other franchises but the idea of setting precedent that I own this asset and I'm going to operate it and that there's this body that's going to come in and tell me that I have to sell it, which by default will devalue it, right? Because I'm not like selling on my terms. I'm selling on someone else's terms. Like it's sort of anti-American, anti-capitalism. Like it's very Russian communism. Well, the Dan kind Snyder of thing is a great example yeah. of if if someone digs in, I mean, the issue in the Angelo story, and this will be the heart of the issue, is how much money the family really has, because that's part of the issue here is that they're cobbling. You see, they're selling properties that the inside word, because I wrote, by, by the way, for those of you out there, I haven't even read this out loud. I put it out on the Internet. 10,000 people have read my letter to John Angelos. I will read it out loud. I'll get it on the air. I'll get it into the audio vault. I'll do all of that. But when I wrote it, um, Everybody's talking to me all of a sudden, Bill. So, you know, the reporter, Chad Steele might not think I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist this week, buddy. Um, so everybody's talking to me. And the, the first text that came my way after I, I put it up at 930 on Tuesday morning, by 10 o'clock, a pretty well-placed person sent me a text and said, you got everything right except one thing. He ain't a billionaire. That That's what somebody wrote to me that. They have money problems. And I think that that is a fascinating backdrop to this, that mm. the mass and money's dried up. Now, keep in mind, call, Lewis, call the brother, accused them of that in the in the paperwork last year. Like Dan Connolly wrote a little bit about this in his piece at Sports Not, but the notion I that rephrase, I would just rephrase it, not money. I would I, I believe it's probably a liquidity problem. Right, because he's got an asset worth a, a billion and a half dollars. Correct? Lots of assets. Lots of assets. They they probably have assets like Charles Center there. that they don't know what to do with. Right? right, like literally, same problem all of Manhattan has. We have a big building, it ain't worth what it used to be worth, and we don't know what to do with it. People aren't coming back to work. But for the, for the baseball team, and just the the main focus is this, Bill, and and I would just say this as a citizen, the fact that. This this issue with Kevin Brown, it, it, it's going to linger on. They're going to go to the West Coast. People are going to forget about it. They're going to chant, you know, free Kevin Brown for a day or two, and it's fine. I guess he'll come back and do his job and pretend this never happened. I guess Palmer and McDo Ben McDonald, all of them who didn't stand up for their partner at all, and everybody's, you can't stand up. You all get fired. And I'm like, well, then you're all being complicit in something that's shitty. I mean, that's awful That 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 everybody knows everybody's in on it. But but there are broadcast that and they can't broadcast. So the weirdness of all of that gets taken over by the fact that the team's really good. They're going to be really good. They're going to play next month. They're going to play into October, even though Batista blew the game the other night. Like I, they're 
the, the relevance of baseball and the fact that people are talking about it and the fact that Westmore needs to get a lease done and John's getting pressured to some point now because of his own stupidity. I mean, nobody was talking about John Angelos three days ago. Like, and this went on. He hid this for almost three weeks. This kid was suspended and run off for almost three weeks before it leaked out. So he almost had an airtight ship to throw his primary broadcaster off the air for a month and have nobody even notice it because they're winning so many baseball games. But now people are calling me and we're peeling back the onion because, Bill, the bigger question is who's running the place? Where's the money coming from to sign Rutschman? Where's the money? I've talked about this the last three weeks. I talked about it with Mike Rosenfeld last week about it. Like at some point, there needs to be money to support the franchise, to your point, that they're not Tampa Bay. There have to be sponsors. There have to be skyboxes. There has to be revenue. There have to be asses in the seats. They have to sell ads. They, 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 and they're not good at most of that and haven't been and haven't been very good long enough to sell any of that to create that revenue so that this becomes sustainable. Sustainable, to your point. Do you want to go back to being awful again and have awful baseball players? The only way you do that is to make exceptional decisions with the money. and. At least the lights are on again. At least we're talking about it, and there's some civic pressure. I mean, you had 15,000 people chanting free Kevin Brown inside the stadium on the broadcast that was being ignored by the broadcasters, but broadcasted on TBS. Right. And people are, dare I say, woke. So, I, you know, sometimes I get this – I. I I guess I tend to be a conspiratorial type of person I know that anyway, you, right? because you're, you're independent. <laughs> you're proudly independent. So my question is, like, okay, if you smell smoke, there's fire, right? I My assumption is that when you're a really bad baseball team, your misbehaving is generally not noticed. Nobody notices. Like, nobody cares. It doesn't really matter. You do whatever you want. Nobody, there's no consequences. Nobody's coming to the games anyway. Like, it, it just does, none of it matters. And my assumption is, John Angelos's like, time as being intimately involved has always sort of been under that veil. And then it's when you go to the national spotlight where all of a sudden, and you can hate this about reporters, you can do, you know, like what, but they will find reasons that you, you know, to create stories to because there's interest. And some of those might be real, some of them might be overblown, some of them not, you know, like, like this one about Kevin Brown seems fairly straightforward, right? Like, you know, John's not going to like talk about it because that would just be the, sort of straightforward way of handling it is like, but when the out, news out, comes out, out about how, how bad shit it is, how crazy right. it is, then <laughs> you then say like, I, 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 I've talked to a lot of people since this story broke. And I wrote the letter to John Angelos. It is awake and it is woke all sorts of people to talk to me. And somebody said to me, and I want to ask you this because you're an executive type around here, Bill Cole, Cole roofing. If nobody else can figure out John Angelos and he's that sort of um, rosebud, you, you, you know, that sort of weird. How's Mike Elias getting along with him? You know what I mean? Like Mike, like Mike Elias is is tied to him at this point. He's fixed the thing on the field. They dealt for the pitcher from St. Louis last week, Flaherty, and that that is what it is. Didn't take on a lot of money or anything like that. It wasn't a dramatic move. It was a good move. And I think it's a move that better than nothing. A, from a baseball perspective, they're a better team today than they were when they didn't have him. Uh, so I'll, I, I'm in on all of that. But I'm just saying, is Mike Elias happy in this relationship? Or would Mike Elias really be rather running the Cubs? Or, or you know, or dealing with someone that's not the owner's uh, son uh, who's – putting his fingers into the broadcast who just can't help himself, but to do dumb stuff because this is really dumb. I mean, aside from all of this and not signing the lease, that might not, not be dumb. If he really wants to move the team to Nashville, if he really thinks he's going to get $300 million more than Steve Bishotti, if he really thinks he's going to get the parody clause taken out, if he really thinks he's going to build a skyscraper on top of, of a tunnel that sits underneath of the, you can speak to that. You're a roofer. They can't build a 30-story tower in parking lot B. 
They can't. It, it, the, the land won't support it. So there's all sorts of issues as to how John's going to get his piece in this lease. And word is from the state, he ain't close to signing the lease and nobody's negotiating anything and nobody can get John on the phone. And what John wants is unreasonable, like his old man. And he speaks to his lawyers and his lawyers are like, when you give me 900 million instead of 600 million and give me squatters rights over the football team, then I'll, I'll sign a lease. Until then, there's no lease. We'll work year to year. There's a, there's a very fine line between uh, visionary, progressive civic leaders and batshit crazy, greedy Major League Baseball team owners. There like you it's go. A, it's a very fine line, meaning that if he would have behaved better for the last 15 years, and the team had, yeah, you, know, you, you forget the wins and losses necessarily. Bill, he doesn't but, have a friend here, right? But but if, he sits if, in that skybox with no one around him. If they like, had the reputation that the Ravens have about in the community and all, you know, like I mean, the, the reality or not doesn't matter. The Ravens have managed their brand to where this is a purple city with you know deep roots in the community and. You know, I mean, they they go out of their way to enhance that brand. If the Orioles had that brand and he, he came at this in a way to try and win the hearts and minds of the people. He's like he's like Bob Kraft creating a city where they built the you know what I mean? Like like there was nothing out there. And now it's like this you know, suburb metropolis outside of Boston or whatever. But this isn't about him torturing Kevin Brown. This is about him torturing all of them. This is about Rob Long coming on after the team blew the game in a key situation in front of a free Kevin Brown crowd. Rob Long comes on with an Oriole hat, an Oriole bird, smiling after the game and has to be completely upbeat because if he's too, if he's not upbeat enough after they lost, John's watching. They're broadcasting for him, for his pleasure, for the king, and they can't even – I couldn't work like that. No way. I did that at Sporting News Radio for two years. No way. I could right. sit here every day and do this worried about somebody tapping me on the shoulder saying, I don't like the stars on your Drug City shirt. Make them circles. Like, I, I, like, I, I, can't, I, I can't do that, and that's what – they put on the air every night for four hours. And now that we know Kevin Brown has been treated like that, we know the whole thing. Um, Bill, I have, I've told but you. It doesn't story. matter. Now. I, I, it, listen, I told this story matter. on San, San Francisco radio. I want to, cause I want to <laughs> tell you, cause I haven't yeah. said it on the air yet. So this is do whatever they want. This is a real story. Okay. So Sunday morning, I woke up in beautiful Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania. You know where that is? I do not. You go to Harrisburg and you follow the river north about an hour, but you don't get all the way to Scranton or Williamsport, right? So I went up to see Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo, the spider, rock out in this wine vineyard up in Sunbury, home of Wise Markets. I went to the original Wise Market. They don't have the same logo. It's like this red thing going on in this old supermarket. It's been there since 1950, right? That's so I'm up in Sunbury. I wake up, get her coffee. We get down the road to, to Harrisburg grab a little lunch with some friends in York and then the game's on. So I'm in the car for an hour listening from York back down into the city and Jorge Mateo. And so I'm listening to the broadcast and it's Melanie Newman. who's awful in, in general. She's awful, but Brett Hollander and Jeff Arnold. It was Jeff Arnold. I believe doing the game that day. So either way, Jorge Mateo comes up and there's nobody on base and he hits the ball up in the air and the ball bounces around, and oh my God, he's at third base, a triple. I'm like, oh, a triple. And they they don't mention anything about the play other than it's a triple. My wife's driving. I'm at like Parkton. I look on my phone. I'm on Twitter because we're listening to the game. My feet are up. The windows are open. And I look down, and everybody's killing Mateo on Twitter, killing him. Shaking it, watching the ball, carried the bat to first base, all of these things that it should have been an inside the park home run. But he completely jaked it. If you go watch it, in the postgame, he apologized for it in Spanish. 
that I should have been running, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> and on the radio broadcast, it was just a triple. So now I'm trusting Melanie Newman and Jeff Arnold and Brett Holland. And I can't blame them, Rob Long, any of them. They work for a goon. I mean, they work for a buffoon goon. And they're not allowed to criticize anything about their players. Anything. So when an error is made, it was just the official score must have screwed that up. I, 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 I like it's insane how off the rails this gets when I'm listening to 98 Rock and I'm listening to the broadcast of the game and the broadcasters are terrified to say what they're seeing on the field. I mean, that, that, Bill, that really happened on Sunday and I had no awareness of Kevin Brown. I just said to my wife, these broadcasters suck. You know, it, and it's all happy, happy, happy. If you listen to Melanie Newman on the radio, everything's the greatest, awesome. I mean, if you just get a thesaurus, for all of those superlatives that are there, Mr. Stockett's thesaurus and Dundalk High and the SATs, that everything's just this is the greatest cheeseburger, the greatest. Oh my God, we got to you got to get this crab cake. You got, I'm okay. I mean, sell it all you want, but there goes your credibility, you know. And that's something that was never for sale for me, which is why you sponsor me. Because if but it comes they... out this mic, it's it's my truth. You may not agree with it, but it's my truth, you know. Um, it's 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 not somebody putting me up to bullshit you because that's not what i do it's not who i am and i'm offended by it uh, in any walk of life i'm offended. okay great what are you gonna do about it Nothing. like like it's their asset they can run it however they want mm -hmm. the only place where it gets a little bit interesting for me is when the city state gives them hundreds of millions of dollars i believe that creates some level of responsibility to the larger public that you don't just get to behave as any private business would behave. You mean right? like throwing out legitimate media members and looking well, that at I don't think right. that. I mean, yeah. look, there are there are laws that govern the country, right? Like there's a lot of you know human resource related stuff, so you still can't just like treat people you know in a way that is not consistent with the laws of the country right so they don't they're not well i was going to say they're not above the law but they they technically are because they have antitrust status and they're allowed to be a monopoly and there's a lot of other <laughs> problems that that creates but not to mention the tax breaks but uh, you're right i mean i mean look it, we can complain about it all you want the fact is that fifteen thousand people were screaming free kevin brown from inside the stadium after they paid for the ticket watching the team play on the field drinking the beers and eating the hot dogs you can scream whatever you want if i'm if i'm john angelo's like i don't care come on in scream whatever you want like that's just their approach that's just their i mean bad good you, you, i just but they believe all that matters is winning on the field and that's probably right based on based know. on who who do you think believes that? John Angelos. No, he doesn't. If you believe that, they wouldn't suck forever, right? They like, tried hard to not suck. That's the word. That, that's the other part of this. They, they don't were trying care. to no, not no, suck. No, no. They don't. Wins and losses are an irrelevant statistic. It is a business that generates a profit or some other financial benefit in some other way that they that that's how they're managing to it. You asked me earlier about Michael. Well, he's got an appreciating asset, right? I mean, he's got an I, asset in, his father bought for 140 right. million. That's worth two billion now. So I, just all uh, on the face of it, there's that. Right. Right? I think Michael Elias puts his head down, goes to work every day, and does the best he can, yes. and knows that there's a better, nicer job in his future somewhere. Like and that, Kevin Brown knows that too. Right. That's that's good enough to keep him going. Bill right. Cole's here. He's Cole Roofing uh, and Gordian Energy. He fixes things, including uh, my roof, and I'm very, very appreciative. I still I got to pay the bill, by the way. Uh, they sent me that. Uh, you can find him at a Cole Roofing, and um, you've been gone for a couple of weeks. Look, you don't even want to talk about this baseball thing. You you haven't completely. You're not into that yet. What 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 have you been doing? I mean, how is no, your? No, I don't. I don't get into this because it's a futile discussion. The, the ownership of professional sports teams can do whatever they want. 
They always do whatever they want. And there's nothing that any of us can do about it. You either choose to cheer Watch for your the game or not. <laughs> in a way that you want. Right. It, you, right. You cheer for your team and however it is that you want. So other than that, I mean, it is what it is. I I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've been working. We're, we're doing a lot of, a lot of solar projects, a lot of excitement around all that. It's been pretty good. A lot of summertime. We're obviously doing a lot of roofs and, you know, for all the schools, trying to get them ready for the kids to go back. And I can't really believe that it's like almost mid August. That's not cool. Um, well, my 25th anniversary was last week, and we did it in Costas it. Thursday. Yeah, sorry. We did Drug City, but I wore my Drug City shirt to make you jealous because everybody that comes to Drug City I do loves like it, that just, shirt. You know. that yeah, a it's a great shirt. shirt. Um, yeah. So I had Johnny O on on Friday. He was talking about, you know, opening all the important stuff, and I'm sitting here talking about a broadcaster, you know, being thrown out of a first place team, and we're all into it. But this has what been was a, the most. What was the most interesting thing Johnny O talked about? Well, I tried to get the lines fixed on Joppa Road. I think we were, you know, involved in that. Um, you know, I, I think it's it, it was he's a teacher, right? So it lent itself to he's fixed two of my schools. He's in Dundalk. We fixed Colgate, but getting Delaney, getting these other schools to where Dundalk is now. Because it, I tell you what, <laughs> you, you go over to Dundalk High School and you see the school physically, and you go to Colgate Elementary where my my son lives, where I went to school, where my son went to school, where my mother went to school. Um. And you see what a new school represents in a community. I mean, even my son's like, I'm not leaving here. We got a brand new school. This, uh, the value of the homes are going to be where it is. Cause you can, you know, a family can always come in here and have a kid that's, or three kids that can walk to school two blocks away in a relatively safe neighborhood in the County, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I think he, he talked a lot about schools and going back to school and, Keeping in mind, and I think for, and you know this, I should say keeping in mind, you have kids. This has been a wacky couple of years to have kids. You, you and I were on the, the Zoom Zoom all during the plague, wearing masks for two and a half years, whatever it was. We're finally getting some sense of normalcy. And by the way, my son and his wife both on the, on the couch with COVID last week, knocked out for a week. So this COVID thing, it's been three and a half years, knock on wood, my wife and I are still like walking the earth and. I'm elbow bumping people and doing all that. But I think for school and going back to school for kids who weren't allowed and homeschooled, I mean, every kid that's in the 10th grade right now is kind of a little screwed up because they spent sixth, seventh and eighth grade on a zoom call, having school, every yeah. kid in the, the country, in the world really had that happen. I think this sense of normalcy and like the kids are going back to school and everybody had a good time at the beach and, the baseball team's good. The football, like it's starting to feel like normal a little bit. And the school part of normal is the most important thing, because like, I think that that is the blip in all of this. Forget interest rates and Trump and Biden and whatever. 10, 15 years from now, what's the outcome of a plague? The outcome is we have a generation of people we're trying to get prepared so that they can take care of my ass when I'm eating pudding later on. And, um, and sending them back to school and having something that's normal again, I I I think that 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 was probably you ask about Johnny O. I I think kids going back to school is probably the biggest thing. Yeah, I, look, there there the school conversation is a a pretty wide ranging one. I mean, if if you go into a school that has not been renovated or rebuilt, and then if you think about the length of usefulness of a school you know, 50 plus years, right? Like how much changes in 50 years? So the stark difference between a school built in the last five years and a school that was built 50 years ago, I mean, it's, you just can't even comprehend it. Now I say that, but at the same time, eh, it's actually not that different. <laughs> like we are the way we have choose to teach kids and all that stuff, like it hasn't really changed. And I think, I, I don't envy teachers one bit. I think they have the most difficult job in the whole entire world. We went from a a uh, Henry Ford assembly line memorize process of schooling to now you have Google. So like, what am I really teaching you? And I like, I don't think they've figured that out. I think that's still, and that now before we even got a chance to figure that out, well, now we have AI and it's writing our papers for us. Well, so the calculator came along when I was of that age, right? Like in the 70s, I had to figure out math. By the time my kid came along in the 90s, they had a calculator to just do it. 
and then kids can't do it. They don't know how to do long division, like whatever. Well, but, man, um, but I mean, I had calculators too, but they still made you do it. Like you weren't allowed to have the calculator, which seems kind of stupid because it isn't like calculators are now. I see go young away. people now that don't know north, south, east, and west. I mean, I, I, I had a 35 year old employee here who didn't know which way north was because yeah. he just never had to learn. And like I and I don't under like to to them Google Maps is the way there. It's not oh, York Pennsylvania is that way and DC is that way and oh we go oh, that yeah. way. I'm going to go to Hagerstown and <laughs> hey that's the way to the Bay Bridge and that's east and the sun comes up every day. I I actually ran into a girl. <laughs> it's the funniest story ever. I ran into a girl in Manhattan, and. I came up with subway. It's about four. I think I told you this on the air when it happened. It was like four years ago. Maybe it was before, during the plague, before the plague. I came up, very, very pretty girl at the top. And she was in her 20s. And I thought, well, maybe I look good today, you know. She <laughs> says to me, hey, um, do you know which way's west? I mean, I, I, I'm going. And I looked up and I saw the sun. I'm like, well, the sun sets in the west, so it's that way. She's like, really? I didn't know that. Like, she literally didn't know that. And I thought, you look normal a minute ago. You look like somebody I'd go on a date with or I'd be happy to have as my daughter. You look educated. I mean, she – but she just didn't know. And I'm thinking to myself, and you wonder why I, I think it's a big deal that Johnny O sends the kids back to school? Right. <laughs> no, I I don't – so the the kid education stuff is, is something that will take, you know, a long time to unpack, right? Like let's see how useful these kids are when they – become adults and all that and I, I yeah i'm i'm worried and nervous but I, uh kids are also resilient so who knows w w the other thing that we have to get our arms around is that like there's a whole bunch of stuff in our world that that the change got accelerated so like zoom for instance hmm. right like that was not a, it existed probably 10 years before the plague right but nobody did QR it. codes are the other one friend of QR mine brought that up the other day yeah, okay. yeah. qr sure. codes were like the metric system they were dead and now <laughs> i can't order a freaking taco when i go out without right. a qr code right i i also think even if you know um and this this probably follows some level of socioeconomic you know demographics but like people were buying from amazon and they were getting things delivered and then in the plague, it went from like, you know, half of us doing that to like 95% of us doing that. And then, sure, maybe that number's come back down now because you can go to stores and everything. How but... much did Deion Sanders love that they call it prime? <laughs> if I uh, see him, I'm going to ask him that. That's funny. By okay. the way, uh, you inspired me. Can I Can I give you a little inspiration shout out? Sure. Because I'm not – Enoch's Maybe. not coming on because he's not public like that. And uh, and well, I'll have Greg Landry on from Towson Transfers. The three of you I, – I met with you about six weeks ago. I said, hey, my 25th anniversary is coming up. What am I famous for other than being me? Um, and all of you gave me some ideas. And then I, you got me looking through like 25 years worth of pictures, stuff, stories, all that. We are going to present, courtesy of our, fr our new friends at Curio – we have a new sponsor – uh, our 25th anniversary, we're going to do 25 stories of glory. So we're going to do the top 25 things WNST has done. And you know what? I've, I've sort of – I got a list of about 35 things. I'm trying to pare it down to just get – I mean, obviously, dude, I did Free the Birds. We did the walk the, – the, the, the New Orleans – March. We had Whiskey Joes. Like, we, there are some things we've done. That's that what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I, I mean, was pretty had, sure that's one and two, right? Like, road trips. We've had, you know, like all sorts of memories. Um, but we've done so many wacky things. All the barn shows, all the purple signs and the orange signs and like crap we've done. And I thought to myself, I'm looking through pictures and I'm like, I took Deion Sanders into Putty Hill Station. In a mink, in a ten thousand dollar mink coat, and he sat down for two and a half hours and told his life story on my on my show with Cordell Stewart. And I'm thinking that might not even make the top twenty five. I don't I mean, think it Brian would. Billick. Right, I have right. a Super Bowl winning head coach <laughs> become our partner here. That's got to be in the top five, right? Sure, sure. So I'm trying to figure out what all these moments are, but then all, all of these wacky things come to us. Like we're in York, Pennsylvania. We ran a puck bus to Hershey fifteen years ago. 
Uh, and it was like this benign thing. And we had a full bus. We had 45 people on the bus and we're going up on a Tuesday night to see the Hershey Bears play whomever. And it was like the night that you got the free Hershey Park uh, ticket for the next summer, right? So it was the big night where everybody goes home with a free Hershey Park admission to go back to the park. So for 50 bucks, 45 bucks, you get on my bus, you get a whole night, and then they give you a free ticket to come back to the park, right? So it's a pretty good deal. We get on the bus, there's an accident like it, I don't know, King Street, George Street, Queen Street, Main Street in York, Pennsylvania, and the bus is trapped. Everybody's trapped. Nobody can get off. We sat there. It was a fatality. It was awful. I mean, medevac, the whole thing. We, we wound up getting to the hockey game just as the third period started oh my in God. Hershey. Um, the Bears were unbelievable. The, the guy that worked for the Bears gave everybody pucks and sticks and shirts and like and gave them a free ticket to come back and see the Bears play if they wanted to come back and drive up on their wow. own. So everybody, wow. it was it worked that's out cool. great. But yeah. I'm thinking these are these memorable. That's not a top 25 moment, but it's allowed me to really take stock. You had your hundredth anniversary my friends at the Maryland lottery had their 50th which kind of inspired me i told john martin that when i was thinking about the 20 i actually have a new logo i'm going to be putting up next week uh, as part of all the stuff we're doing with our 25th anniversary um you know i appreciate you and i appreciate everybody that was such a part of this but even you had a story about being an intern for bob haney here 25 years ago right but that yeah but that i would say that's not necessarily my favorite stories my i mean what what i will never allow anyone to disparage whatsoever is you created a common connection point to the people of this city anytime we went somewhere else so whether we were like on your trip where you you know so you created opportunities for people to do that which are lifetime memories for them and their family and their kids and you know whoever went on those journeys with you those are wonderful memories that you you enabled to occur, right? But when we went to a city, you know, most notably Tampa and New Orleans, right? Like you were the common, you know, uh, lighthouse in the storm that said, all you maniac purple people come here. And they did. And we got to enjoy one another. And we got to show our civic pride in a much, much, much more meaningful way than we would have been able to do otherwise. So th those are, you know, the, the the gap between one and two for me down to like whatever that third memory is. The third memory for me is going to definitely be the barn because like I, I was in college and I would have I had like a Monday night class <laughs> And we would we would like skip we would skip out of that class like a little bit early. Who's Nestor got there tonight? Right, we would just go to the barn and we would sit there and you know that was uh, it was just you know part of the fabric of of life back then. So th those are wonderful memories, man. Like not, nobody can take any of that stuff away. So well, I'm I'm gonna try to at least bring it back. Um, yeah. But the Deion Sanders thing, like the barn shows, my God, I had Rod Woodson, Shannon Sharp, Lawrence Taylor, Ray Lewis, you know, Trent Dilfer, just go down the list of goose. I mean, the, the goose events were their, their own thing. I had yeah. I, I had Jim Harbaugh at the barn, not John Harbaugh at the barn. Um, right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, Brian Billick. How about when when Billick and Modell brought the trophy over and we marched the trophy out onto Harford Road? <laughs> and we had cars honking in traffic. David's holding the trophy up out in traffic. <laughs> right. I, I don't know. In a in a an overly stuffy, you know, professional, extremely controlled environment. Um, you think I don't know kind, about that? I'm thrown that out. Kind, right. That's what I mean. That that kind of grassroots stuff is really what brings meaning to all of it for everybody. And you know, all the. Uh, what do they call them? Like the neighborhood uh, groups that are the ravens, the flocks, or no, roosts, roosts. Yeah, yeah, there you go. The, yes. the roosts, all that stuff. That's all the stuff that brings the meaning to it. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't know. You've done, you've done good. Who makes the magic happen of Oriole baseball? Bill Cole, you make the magic of Oriole baseball happen. Bill Cole is here. He's called Roofing Gordian Energy. Tell him what you do on Roos and how you do it and this whole newfangled solar thing that I see everywhere. I was up in Pennsylvania on some side roads, back roads, doing some things. Solar's here. You know, you, you, you're 
You're doing okay. you're doing the Lord's work, as they say. We did a really nice project up in York, Pennsylvania, for a, a really wonderful family who's got a big warehouse, and then they had they like open their warehouse up to all these different little vendors and sole proprietors, and they come in and they have like a I don't know farmers market type of deal. But anyway, uh, you know, yeah, I would say that we are trying to assess people's roof situations so that we can help them not have to worry about their. Well, your guy came out and told me I, I it's time for me. So yeah. like I got to talk to you. It's been 39 years on my roof, right? Like so like, right? So Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Roofs are definitely this is sort of counter what but this is just who we are. Like if it works, don't mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> like like that is definitely how roofs are. Like the minute you start poking around like No leaky, just, no pokey, right? right? I got you. Exactly. I, I got you. All right. Exactly. Well, I so. hope to see you a little more often than once a month uh, and certainly uh you have inspired me on our 25th anniversary to despite all this Kevin Brown nonsense and Chad Steele nonsense and the teams themselves and the crab cake tour and my 25th anniversary and all of that um that head up and, you know, it's going to be a very, very exciting sports calendar into the fall. And I think uh, it's going it, to – I'm looking forward to kids going back to school. I'm looking forward to wearing a sweater. I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to, to rolling my sleeves up and having some normalcy again come September. How about yeah, that? I'm with you. Let's do it. All right. I'm Nestor. We're WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking Baltimore positive in our 26th year now.